What's going on, Serial Progress Seekers? Marshall here. I'm excited to bring you today's episode. Tabitha and I get to sit down and talk with someone who's got an incredibly interesting and motivational story for the reason that she created this amazing product that is now out into the world and doing really, really great. So we get to sit down and have a really good conversation about the motivation that was behind that and then what developed into the creation, the building, and bringing this product to the mass market. So it's a really awesome conversation conversation. Can't wait for you to check it out. This is episode 92 of the Serial Progress Seeker podcast. Let's go. Welcome to the Serial Progress Seeker podcast, where we share blueprints for building an unconventional life. Each week, we conduct expert interviews, talk strategies, and share advice for escaping the nine to five and building a life where you are free to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, all while making an excellent living. Okay, Serial Progress Seekers, let's get started with the show. All right, Tabitha, I'm really excited for us to dive in today. This is going to be a really fun conversation. We have been looking forward to this for several weeks now. This is really, really cool. Um, And I'm excited for you to get to tell your story. How did you come across our guest that we're going to be talking to here today? Yeah, so being the lone woman of Serial Progress Seeker podcast, my goal is to go find all of the badass women that are out there, the, the entrepreneurs who are out there kicking ass. And yep. bring them to the light of day because mm-hmm. they don't get near as much uh, publicity as they should. So that is uh, what I'm trying to do today. Uh, imagine this. I'm randomly scrolling TikTok. Can you believe it? In the middle of the night. And no. I come across this <laughs> I come across this video. And I, I'm going to try my hardest not to spoil it because I do want her to tell her story in just a little bit. Um, but it was her talking about somebody telling her she couldn't do something. And she's like, hold my beer. Watch this. I am going to go tackle this. And I'm going to go kick ass. And I was like, I love this girl. I don't know her, but I love her. And I cannot wait to talk to her. We've got to get her on. Because that's like the true definition of a serial progress seeker. Somebody that doesn't let anything hold them back. They see a need for something. They go out there and create that no matter how little resources they have or how little knowledge they have. They just go out there and make shit happen. And so that's how I come across Amberly Franklin with Radar QR. So Amberly, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Tabitha and Marshall. We're excited to get... How does it feel to know you're a badass? Immediately, you've been identified as a badass right out of the gate. So that's got to feel pretty good, right? Well, that makes Tabitha my best friend because (laughs) nobody's ever called me that. (laughs) Nice. Uh, No, it's really really, um, exciting to think that I might be onto something that can change the way singles date and meet in the future. So... Very much so. So right out the gate, let's talk. Tell us about Radar QR and what was the inspiration? Because I do want to hear the story. Everyone should hear the story (laughs) about what made you decide to create this this revolutionary dating app. So Radar QR is all about following your natural radar and connecting with QR code. So imagine you're in a room with 100 people, right? You're always always scouting and you're like okay who's attractive here if i if the world ended and i'm on a desert island or something or the world ended and there's one person who in this room is my person uh so someone's always on your radar um and we just connected with qr code you know um so the story of kind of how it originated i met this guy in tech and he i'm in the bay area so everybody's tech at this point right um But we met on Bumble, and then we broke up, and he's like, what are you going to do, go back on Bumble? And I was like, no, actually, did you know? I'm smarter than that. Because COVID started, and everybody learned how to use the QR code. Like, it's been around since 1994, but it didn't really kick off until COVID. And now it's on your shampoo bottles. It's literally everywhere. It was on every table. So I'm sitting there, even, like, dating this guy. I remember going to lunch and just seeing QR codes, and I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. How do I... Why isn't this on a, like, why can't you connect with people everywhere? So I go, we break up. I'm like, I'm going to do this. And I make a prototype because he's like, no, there's no way you're going to do that. You don't have a tech background. It's not going to happen for you. So I make the prototype and then I show him and like, look what I did. So the prototype, it originally was on a, I started out on just like a website And then I connect the QR code and I put them on cards at first and I ordered cards and I went to his house and I was like, scan this. And then he scanned it. Was this after you guys had broke up? Yes. (laughs) I love it. I love it. 
it took me about a week and a half to come up with this prototype and because I was just like, I'm going to do this. And immediately he was just like, I think he saw a dollar sign, so he wanted to be involved. He was like, let me help you uh, figure this out. And he really wanted to be part of my patent and everything. Um, so he did kind of tell me, you know, you're going to need a developer. And I'm like, okay. So I just, I start putting all these ideas together, contacting people. And before you know it, two years later, I mean, it's not like it was a quick process, but two years later, I've got this wonderful alpha that's out being tested and it's working and we're, we're just seeing what we can make and how we can change the dating world right now. That's incredible. I love wow. that. I, the one thing that I connected to that story, because he was like, you can't do that. You're not in tech. And you're like, F you, buddy, watch me to make this happen. And you went and did it. I That's know. incredible. So it was so you go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was like, it was a thing. <laughs> That's all. So you had this big light bulb moment and you write out your whole ideas and you come up with your little prototype and then you have to go find a developer. So tell me about the process because you say you're not in tech. So how, one, did you know what a developer was? And two, how did you go and find the right people if that's not your industry? So I kind of started with all the dating apps that are out there, right? You, If you want to make something, you're like, okay, what is it I want to make and what is out there now and what does it work like and how does, how does it function and what do I need to be able to talk about when I'm talking to somebody about this idea? Um, so I literally downloaded like 20 different dating apps. I looked like Casanova on my phone. Like I had <laughs> Grinder, I had them all. <laughs> I, nice. had fake, I had a fake ID for that one, but I was just <laughs> like, what, what are the capabilities that everybody can do and what can I push my app to do and what aren't they doing? Because for me, I wanted the entire reason I made this app is because it didn't exist and I didn't want to go back on dating apps. You know, I wanted something better and different that connected me that wasn't happening. So then, you know, so I'm just what did you kind of hate around. about dating apps? What was it that you that you saw in all these other apps? You're like, that is awful. That sucks. I don't like that part of it. It wasn't so much the app interface, like it wasn't really the platform. It was really just the whole process. You know, I hated meeting someone online based on their looks, you know, like, yes, there's a little checklist of like, do they meet my criteria? But I hated showing up and realizing there was no chemistry. And then I'm disappointed or they're disappointed and it's wasting everyone's time or you get ghosted because there's so many choices that everyone's disposable at this point because nobody's met, you know, at the beginning. So it's overwhelming. And I thought, I was like, well, what is the definition of insanity if not doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results? So why do we as singles download the app to delete the app, to download, to delete? Like, yes, we could give our phone number out to any person anywhere. And that would be really easy. And that'd be great if it were safe. Problem is right. having your phone number and your name opens you up to so many cybersecurity issues. Like someone can go and like drain my bank account just having my phone number. So I'm a single mom. I was like, how do I do this safe for other women? Like, and men, you know, it's just, there's gotta be a smarter, safer way with like the advances of technology. Got it. So how, and I got you sidetracked. I'm so sorry. Cause I was just kind of curious, what was it that you didn't like about the other ones that you were going to make different with yours? But so we were talking about, um, finding developers. So how did you go and find your, your tech people that knew how to put everything together? It was a very funny process. I would say, um, in the beginning, I'm like, Google, how to make an app. <laughs> and then uh, literally it's like, it tells you everything you need. Thank God for mm -hmm. Google. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I found, I went on Upworks. I love Upworks. I love it. Love it. I went on there and I found a, um, a developer in India and I was like, I have this idea and it doesn't exist. So I need to talk to somebody about it. That was a good place to start um, for us. And he's like, okay, you're going to need, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. And I'm like, okay, just making a little list. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to find out what you need. And, uh, yes, you know, it was like 
walking myself through everything and then walking them through something that I didn't know what I was really talking about at first. It's a, it was a, it was a, a learning process, I'll say. I love that that's what your process was, though, because how many people are scared to to make a first move, to say, I don't know what I don't know, so let me go Google something, or let me go hire somebody and ask them questions. Most people get scared to death to even move because they don't know what these steps even look like because they've never gone down that avenue to even see what it looks like. You know what I mean? And so the fact that you're, you weren't scared to go down that avenue was, was uh, incredible. So you were talking with the developer and he's giving you these, this list of things to do. And you're like, I don't know what this is, but I will go figure it out. What were those steps? What did it look like? Did you have to like create a mock-up or did he help you create that first initial layout and design of the app? No, uh, I had to do it myself, which was fine. Um, so I have, I'm doing this interview in my in my bedroom because my living room is just covered in post-its because that's literally how I've run this entire thing from the mock-up stage, I would say. It started with just like covering my entire wall, like here's my login screen. What comes next? And I looked at other apps and it's like, okay, well, they, they need your phone number. They need email. They need this. Um, and then it came like, okay, what do I want this app? to look like and move like and what do I want this button to lead to and so I had to really lay it all out for them that's step incredible that's awesome I love that because I'm a sticky note girl too I've got them everywhere yeah. <laughs> so yeah I know working time. with tech which because I've worked with tech for a long time you don't always find the perfect match as far as finding the right developers to work with has that been a good process for you? Have you found the one person and you've been with them the whole time or have you had to kind of make adjustments? <laughs> I'm going to say I got very lucky. I've been with, um, well, I was with one developer in the beginning and then we kind of handed off the project to a new developer. Um, but I still have some of the same members of the original team. So they're very aware of the ins and outs of this this and my whole thing was I didn't want to take it to somebody totally new who didn't know where I was going with it. Um, and I wanted, I also too, I was like, I want to bring you with me for this entire trip. Like this is going to be different and there's nothing like it. And I want you committed to my team. So I definitely, um, had some kind of like bond with them, you know, and my developers, um, they have been the same team. My designers, I have shifted, but I keep one of them on backup. He had like, personal life things like getting married and starting a new career. So I definitely had to let him go, but I still love him. <laughs> yeah. That's good that you've had the same team. That's incredible. Cause I know a lot of times that's a lot of shifting. So while we're talking mm -hmm. about the team, you also have a business partner. So can we talk about how that relationship started, how you guys got together to work on this app and, and where that is now? Yeah, so I met my business partner, Richard, his name's Richard, I met him about three years ago here in San Francisco. And we just hit it off. Sometimes you just hit it off in conversation with people. And he was one of those people. And I told him, I was like, Yeah, when I leave the military, I'm never going to work for anybody again. I don't know what I'm going to do. At that point, I did photography, I still do. But I was like, I just know that I'm, I'm going to do something different. And it's, I'm not going to have a boss, I'm going to be the boss. And he was, his entire, like, his entire career was entrepreneurship. And so he's been kind of a mentor for me. And it's funny, he's about 25 years older than me, probably. But we just get it. Like, we can sit down and just talk and talk like no one's in the room about ideas. And when I came to him with this idea, I trusted, you know, I trust, like, his position in professionalism. And I was like, listen, like, I need you on my team. I was like, I don't have all the skills that I need to make this a success. But you do, you bring a whole business element that I just don't have. I have structure, leadership, analysis, like, I'm pretty good with strategy. I'm all pretty good with like artificial intelligence and things like that. So my background was just really different. I was like, we could complement each other well. And he happened to have a slight tech background. So he can write code and things like that. He's not part of the development, but it's nice to have him on my team because he can wrangle in my guys sometimes and be like, well, I think that we can actually do this. So I knew I didn't have the skills, but I knew I had to bring in the people who did. And I trusted him just based on our chemistry, I guess. Um, he's 
maybe I'm an old soul or he's a young soul. Like, I'm not really sure, but <laughs> we just get it. And he never questions, you know, anything I, I come to him with, he'll give me like a really good perspective, um, but he'll never shoot me down. So that's good. And age is just a number when you get to, you know, older in life. It's just, <laughs> it literally is just a number. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> 100%. 100%. That's actually one of the features we put in our app. It's called age is just a number and you can turn oh. it off so people don't see your age. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I nice. like that. I think I like that. I want to know more. <laughs> Tabitha. I, yeah. yeah. Tab, she's like, yeah, I'm not quite so sure. I want to know more about the, the partnership aspect because that's something I just don't know a lot about. So I'd love to know, it, it, you know, what you can tell us obviously, but what's that? So uh, you get to a certain point and you're like, okay, I've identified this person that I'd like to bring on my team and be my partner. What's the, what's the like official setup like? Like what, what does that look like? How do you, how do you go about dividing the labor and, and you know, what's the financial piece behind that and stuff like that? How does, how do you kind of coordinate all that? Yeah. One of the main reasons I needed partners because it's very expensive to do this um, on your own. And I originally went in, I'm like, okay, I've got this much money and that's as far as I can get. And then I'm like, Oh, if I want it to do everything, I'm going to need a partner. Um, my primary focus on bringing in a partner was, I'm all about it. Let's have fun. But I need to have 51% because I need the creative control over my idea. Um, and he's he's so flexible and easy. He's just like, yeah, it sounds great. So um, work-wise, we both have full-time things that we do outside of this. I am retiring from the military to pursue this full-time. I'm all in all in, um, in a month. So right now it's, um, I've been working, you know, in the daytime in the military and then I come home and work at night on this app until like two in the morning and then it's just not sustainable. So, um, it's exhausting. But yeah, yeah. Our, we're both, we're both hustling. We're both working We're we do two tech meetings a week, um, with our team and just kind of keep everyone on the ball and, if you say this is what we get by the end of the week, we're checking in and yeah. So tell us, let's get into the app a little bit and tell us a little bit about how you got your early adopters. How did you get your first few people to download the app and start using it so you could start getting some data feedback? So we have an alpha team. Um, our alpha team, um, they're helping us test and get all the bugs and find things that maybe the tech team didn't think would happen when it went live. And so... I kind of just made a few like Canva flyers and sent them out to my friends. And I was like, who wants to help me uh, do this alpha testing? And I got 20, 20 of my good friends to do it. And we got them all set up with their cards, tattoos, shirts, you know, things like that. And then I think January 4th, we went live, uh, live in like the app stores, and Google play. And then they were able to download it. And then I made a TikTok video and then we got like a thousand people overnight. And then I was like, wow. well, actually, this is perfect. We just have a thousand app testers right now, alpha testers. Um, so yeah, we were very vocal and very upfront, just like, hey, we're in testing phase, stay, play, it's free, it's free all year. So we want people to give feedback, you know, that's that's what we're doing in alpha. So it kind of so just how uh, it blew up. <laughs> How is alpha testing going? How are the the feedback been so far uh, with all the, the users that are in it right now? It's going really well. I think some people are really were surprised at first. They're like, you know, there's like not any singles in here, <laughs> you know, like swiping. And I was like, well, yeah, we're in user acquisition phase. You know, we're getting our users, but also we're building the app still and we're testing it for everybody, uh, which is why it's free is because... We're not going to charge people while we're perfecting a product, um, you know. So, yeah, I think that was initially surprising, but I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from people just like, this is fun. This is surprising. Like, everyone I hit on, it works. <laughs> and it's funny because the app is designed not just for swiping. It's designed to get you out there and connecting with the people in real life. So once you wrap your head around it, just like there are two types of apps in the world. One, all of them swipe. So one is every other app and then one's us. We're, it's like, we're not your, yeah, we're just like the get off the app app, if that makes sense. <laughs> Go have fun kind of app. I like it. I wish that it was there like 
15, 20 years ago when I was single. <laughs> oh, man. That's so cool. I, I can see myself with like this big QR code on my shirt just walking around downtown. <laughs> That's me. That is so me. Yeah. Well, I saw a TikTok where you like shared it with a bunch of people on a plane and I was like, oh, yeah. that's hilarious. You can How did that go? It's yes. Uh, connected with one person. Yeah. And it was, and I, we talked to him on the plane and it, we were just testing it. We're like, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Like you gotta, that, that's the whole thing with this app. Like I have so many prototypes around my house just because I've had so many products that I've tested, right? Like shirts scan from about 40 feet away but you don't know that until you buy the shirt and try it you know hats are like 15 feet you know so everything is just kind of like trying it out so that we can like set the users up for success <laughs> what's tell me tell me like the craziest um connection story you've seen just right out of the gate as far as like what's the what's the what's the wildest kind of delivery method obviously you said putting something on someone's shirt i'm like okay that's unbelievable that's awesome uh, you know what what are what and i'm sure you're testing a lot of those different things what what have you had the most fun with so far you guys are killing me i <laughs> i just got these prototypes made that are gonna be fun but i haven't used those yet um just like okay so the qr card just like a little card yeah. That's got, um, it's in our swag shop. You can get a hundred for like, sometimes it's 14 bucks. Sometimes it's 20 bucks, depending on if it's on sale, but it's got, you put your code on in the middle. These are fun because it's like the modern day number on a napkin and it's safer. Mm -hmm. Um, these, when I was alpha testing these, I had so much fun. Um, just like being a, say there's a car parked at the stoplight and I'm walking down the road, I would just knock on their door and hand it to them. And then people would <laughs> message me in the app and be like, that is insane. And what is happening? Like, this is so much fun. I've never been hit on this way. Awesome. Just wild stuff like that. I don't know. We've got these, um, you know, the, maybe, you know, like the guy with the sign, the like infamous famous guy that holds the cardboard sign. Oh yeah. Okay. So we got some of those prototypes made that are just big white signs with a QR code on them. And we're like, yes. how fun would these be at a sporting event on the Jumbotron? Oh, like, man. Like, everybody in there could scan so cool. it, and you still choose who you match with. Like, it's just yeah. wild. Yeah. You reach people <laughs> that you normally couldn't reach. So, yeah. So many fun things. Dogs, so, shirts. So you mentioned that you don't – you get to choose who you match with. So what are those people that are scanning your code, what are they able to see – before you actually make that match. They're going to see a screen that says, um, that shows my photo and it says, do you want to connect? It's like, check yes or no. And then they make their selection. And then I, as the code owner, would get a notification that somebody wants to connect with me. If they don't have the app already, they would be prompted to download it because that's how all app connection communication can work. Um, but yeah, and then I would receive a like and I can see their profile and whatever they send. They also have the option of sending a comment before I approve. Just like, hey, I saw you wherever. And it just kind of helps them shoot their shot a little bit more um, <laughs> before yeah. the actual approve. And it might, it might motivate somebody to click yes instead of no, right? Okay. All right. Oh, cool. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so you say right now the app is absolutely free for the next year. So what is the plan for monetization once that year is up? Because obviously you're leaving the military, you're going all in, you've got to be able to su support yourself and your daughter. So what is, uh, what's that like? What's the plan? Our monetization plan, uh, we have like a huge checklist of different features that we anticipate kind of charging towards like other apps do. Um, but the QR code will always be free, period. Um, people will always have access to their profile code to share it and wear it however they want. That's a win-win for us, too, because it helps bring users into the app. Um, but it's a win-win for them. Like, you can get QR codes for free everywhere. So I'm, we're, not trying, we're not trying to charge for that. Um, we do have a lot of features coming out in beta that are going to make, like, for us, we feel like the biggest value is in our beta. So there are features in there where we will test for the next six months after it's released, and then um, we'll be able to monetize on that. But our subscription rates, they are, they'll be comparable, if not less than others. So yeah, and it's not because of value, it's because of just, you know, promoting real over swiping. Yeah. 
So I've not been on dating apps ever because I was married before so all that crap came out. <laughs> Yeah, I had to do the real life thing where I met him in high school, known him my whole life. So what what do apps normally run? I have no idea. Depends. Like um, Bumble, for instance, I believe is about 40 bucks a month. It's kind of wild. Yeah. So we're we're also looking at tying in automatic card mail outs. They would automatically go to your house as part of your subscription. So you're getting something for it. Uh, we're currently working Tangible. on, yeah, yeah, we're working on the integration of that uh, right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything has to be charged at some point, only because it does cost so much to run it. Like I've been paying for everything out of my pocket, not only just to build the app, but to keep it moving and for everyone to use it for free. So I know going global and you know, I know that that's more money out of my pocket. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit because you're, you're, ret- you're retiring about a month from the time of this recording. So yeah. how did you know that right now was the time to be like, okay, I'm done with this, which by the way, let me pause for two seconds. Thank you for your service. I love the military yeah. people. So Absolutely. thank you very thank much. You. And Coast thank Guard, you. am I remembering that correctly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. 20 years. So how did you know? Ah, <laughs> oh, Amazing. I should have gone Navy, but anyway, um, how did you know right now was the right time to, um, to leave that career and go full into this app? Like what, what was the deciding factor for you? There were a couple of things. Um, for me, I'm a commissioned officer and I knew that if I took the rank of Lieutenant, I would have to commit another period of time. Um, I believe it was like four years or six years before I had the option of getting out and, I had this baby going, right? Like I had this app, I'm excited about it. And I found that I spent all my free time working on the app because I enjoyed it. And I'm like, well, if your heart is naturally pulling you somewhere else and like, it's okay to change your mind and to pursue something else. Like sometimes something expires for you. And for me, the military has been literally my entire life. I joined when I was 18. I'm 38 now. More than half my life has been in the military and I have everything to... Um, to thank them for, but it's time to like go pursue something else. That's awesome. That's awesome. So one year from now, where do you see Radar QR and what are you doing to get yourself to whatever that goal is one year from now? One year from now, we will be making some money. (laughs) That will be nice. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we'll be international. We're hoping to go international by the summer um, just at least with our alpha version and we'll be growing. So our beta, like, like, I don't know if I said, but beta is more exciting than alpha. If you think alpha is great, stick around for beta. Beta is where we make dating social. And we literally, it's almost as if dating apps and social apps are having a baby. (laughs) So it's going to be a lot of fun. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, so I know, there's so many different pieces and like a whole like schedule and timeline that are going to go with beta that I'm going to have to stay focused on that and help it grow. So I, I already know, like I have my work cut out for me in there on the board. Like it's not like, cut out for you for oh, sure. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So when does beta release? Do you have, and I know with development that could change and vary. Like I know that what's the right. goal for beta to release? Goal is May. Yeah. So my retirement day is my retirement date is May 1st. So we started this whole process a long time ago. And I was like, listen, guys, my goal is to keep us on time. And May 1st, I want to see beta out. And that means we start testing it, right? So I won't be perfect when it hits, but people will be able to try it out from the get go, because we're out there, everyone's in a live testing environment right now. Um, So everyone's going to get to try it out and kind of see what it does for them. It will answer two questions that singles have, and it's where are the singles and who in the room is single? So, hmm. yeah, I know. Keep you on the, oh, cool. <laughs> on the, it's very seat. interesting. Yeah. Tabitha, you know, what's funny. Uh, obviously I've, I've been on this scene a little more recently than you. And I just <laughs> wish I could, it, you know, obviously I would never go back because just like you said at the beginning, Amberly, it was a nightmare trudging through other apps. It really was. And that's why this conversation, I think 
in this particular app is so appealing because it's it just doesn't feel like it's going to be like that. And I'm, I'm happy for you, but I'm also like looking forward to seeing what's going to what's going to come of this because man, it's uh, the potential is out of this world. The marketing opportunities that you've already touched on out of this world. So and what? How cool! <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm, I'm, jeal- I'm 90% jealous and 10% proud. So well done. Oh, thanks for it. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good for all singles. I I have a boyfriend now who I met doing my prototype, which is funny. Um, yeah, but I, I, I was going to ask where you were like, right now with relationship. So perfect. I, know. Yeah. I made I made this app to meet somebody, and I did I did meet somebody, <laughs> and it, but it just happened to be before. <laughs> it did work. <laughs> well, that was the entire goal, right? <laughs> That's awesome. I know. Awesome. So, last question for you: Is there any kind of advice that you would give to anybody listening that has an idea for a, for an, a service, an app, a product, and they just don't know how to get it off the ground? Is there anything that you would say to them to inspire action, just to get them get them rolling? I think the best advice anybody could have is to get a mentor. If you just don't know what you're doing or where to start, Google. Uh, get a mentor, read about it, watch videos about it, like get obsessed with it, you know, like that's literally what I did. And my business partner is my mentor in this. And it takes a, it takes a village. It takes a village to make a product, especially when you don't have that particular background, but you have the idea and you're just like, I, I think we can do this, but you need the right people to tell you how it can or can't work sometimes. Um, so, yeah, you can't connect the dots by yourself. I think that's great advice. So we were talking earlier. I'm going backwards. Sorry. We were talking earlier about it. Googling it and finding all the answers. And how scary was it before you Googled? And how scary was it once you actually knew the steps that, that it took to make it happen? It's still scary. <laughs> I still think, scary. Uh, it's still scary. Yeah, because I don't have all the answers, but I'm figuring it out one step at a time. Um Yeah, I just, it was intimidating at first because that person that I had broken up with was like, you'll never succeed without me. You need me. I'm tech and you're not. And it was just very much like, ah, okay. Well, now I have to be successful because he said that. (laughs) Um, But I'm also, I have a lot to learn. I have a long road ahead of me. And I knew it wasn't going to be an overnight thing. Um, And yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I listen to everyone who gives me any advice and I appreciate it and I take it and I, I make it a sticky note, <laughs> you know, I circle around and I learn about it. So <laughs> that would be my advice is so, just don't stop and yeah. Keep rolling, keep going one step at a time, one tiny step yep. at a time makes progress. So tell everyone where they can download Radar QR and where they can get some more information. So Radar QR, it's available on app stores as well as Google Play. We are currently only available in the United States. We We hear all the countries right now who are like reaching out to us and we are excited to go international (laughs) Um, on TikTok is kind of where I've been putting my like information and update kind of videos like, hey, this is where we are or X, Y, Z. I will be announcing on TikTok when we go international and we are very excited to do that. Um, We um, are available on RadarQR.com. That's so cool. We'll be sure to link all that, obviously, in the show notes and stuff, too, because okay. it's uh, we 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 obviously want to share this with anybody possible. What a cool tab. What a cool story. I'm so glad you found Amberly. Um, this is uh, this is awesome. And I and I'd love to and I'm, I'm stealing a spot from our buddy Ben here because he did this on a recent episode. But I sure. would love Amberly, if you wouldn't mind, can we reach out to you in a year, bring you back on? and get a status update and see what's going on. Would you be willing to do that? Absolutely. I would love it. So as of today, how many users do you have as of today? We have 1,100 alpha testers as of today. (laughs) Users, yeah. So a year from now. (laughs) A year from now. We're on a baseline. Yeah. I know. I just, I would definitely want to remind people we're building and testing. That's what this entire year is about, but it's free. So I would encourage people to get in and play around with it and, discover it and share it and just learn about it, you know, so do something different, right? Shoot your shot, as you say. That is literally, (laughs) this is the shoot your shot app. And there is no other way to put it, Tabitha. You nailed it. (laughs) You're so lucky you didn't have to do that. I heard you say that. 
Oh, I know. I heard you say that in one TikTok and I swear I've heard that 5,000 times since then. I was like, I had never heard that phrase and now I'm hearing it everywhere. I actually told Marshall <laughs> about it like two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. My business partner, he's like, are you sure people say that? I was like, yeah, they, kids, the kids say it. Like we, we say it. <laughs> they <laughs> say yeah. it a lot. <laughs> they do. And people, well, thank you so much for being yeah. on. Thank you. We, I have so thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you, my new best friend, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I cannot right. wait to see where you are a year from now. Well, thank you for finding me, Tabitha and Marshall. Thank you for hosting me, both of you. Thank you so much. Of course. I'll see you guys in a year. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Serial Progress Seeker podcast. If you want to listen to more episodes, learn more about our mission, or send us questions or feedback about the show, go to SerialProgressSeeker.com. You can help the mission by subscribing, reviewing, rating, and commenting wherever you listen to or watch podcasts.